ओम तत्पुरुषाय विमह वक्रतुंडा धीमह तन्नो दंदि प्रचोदया ओं साईश्वराय विमह सत्यदेवाय धीमह तन्न सर्व प्रचोदया ओं जयंती मंगल काली भद्र काली कपालिनी दुर्गा श्यामा शिवदात्रे स्वाहा स्वदा नमोस्तु दे ओं शांति 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 हे सैरम लीन सैरम फ्रम लीज Sairam Sharma, Sairam from New Zealand. Our topic today is the bait and the catch. And I am speaking of Swami's book, Gita Vahini. Welcome to our listeners, wherever you may be. Sharma and I welcome you, as always, to listen to our humble little talks. We are so delighted when we see you are there listening. And we thank Swami for sending you. Um, we love to speak of Swami, and we see this as a sort of international satsang, and we welcome your comments. Um, as always, we read every one and are always delighted to hear your suggestions and your appreciation. And if anything doesn't ring true for you, we would welcome that as well, because we are always endeavoring to improve our little talks. Now, as most of you know, Swami himself wrote a whole series of books called the Vahinis. Now, I arrived in New Zealand in 1974 from Washington, D.C., and for the first time I saw in the street um, Hare Krishna devotees. There was a large presence of Krishna devotees in New Zealand at that time. They were mostly Westerners, and they had fully adopted the um, the Hare Krishna dress and were giving, um, uh, not talks, but they were giving out free Bhagavad Gita's in uh, Queen Street, which was our main street. And I often had to walk up Queen Street to get to my work. And I was always uh, accosted by Hare Krishna devotees wanting to give me a Bhagavad Gita. After, and I was, I was too polite to say, no, I don't want one. In those days, I wasn't so interested uh, but pretty soon I had about six of these Bhagavad Gitas, and I never bothered to read any of them. I found it too dense. Um, it did not appeal to my Western mind, and so I think I just kept giving them to secondhand bookstores. However, uh, not too long after I had been in New Zealand, I think perhaps a year, I went to a dinner party, and there was a man there who was a representative of Collins Books UK. Uh, this is a publishing house, or was a publishing house in England, and he was the sales representative for them here in New Zealand, which of course is a Commonwealth country. And he said he had just returned from a place called Prashanti Nilayam, and he uh, had seen Swami. Swami in those days was walking in the sand. There was no uh, concrete um, front to the mandir. Swami would come out and give darshan by walking in this reddish gold sand. The man was very much a very, um, he was an Englishman and very conservative, sort of, you can imagine, three-piece tweed suit and a briefcase kind of fellow. And he was saying, I saw this man with a large afro walking in the sand, and as he walked, beautiful little gold medallions and pearls were coming out of his feet, and we were all scrambling to pick them up. I listened to this story with my mouth hanging open. I thought, is it truly possible? And the man had little bags of babuti. Uh, he was giving out. I didn't get one of the bags of babuti. I really wanted one, but I didn't get. Instead, he gave me a book, Gita Vihini. And on the cover of the book was Swami in a red robe, long, beautiful red robe. He had his hands behind his back, very big afro, quite young. And that particular edition is viewable on the thumbnail of this talk. I was immediately struck by the photo of Swami on the cover. I thought, oh, he looks like some sort of yogi. What a sweet face. He's very handsome. Uh, he must be very striking wearing that red, red gown, which I thought looked more like a lady's dress than a man's. I didn't know anything about Swami in those days. And of course, I had this very um, kind of a Western mind, you know, immediately judging a person on their appearance. But I thought, well, I will have a look at this book. And then I saw Gita and I thought, oh my gosh, this is another 
book on the Bhagavad Gita. But then when I began reading it, I could see that it was Swami's own um, work about the Bhagavad Gita, and it was not just another reproduction of the Gita. It was full of profound spiritual truths. Now, it did not have a glossary in the back, and it was one of those um, Indian editions. It might have even been printed in the ashram, because by that time, Professor Kasturi was had a printing press that Swami had had bought secondhand in Bangalore, and they were producing books in the ashram. Now, I knew that it was a uh, limited kind of edition. The paper was very tissue-like, and obviously the slugs for the typesetting had been set by hand because some of the words were a bit crooked on the page. And I knew that this, this had been a labor of love to produce a book like that because you've got to set every single uh, letter, you know, slug. It's a, a slug is a metal or lead piece that has got the letter imprinted on it or the number, and you've got to set them all by hand. It's a very laborious process. I thought, wow, someone has really gone to a lot of trouble to produce this book, and it was hand-sewn. I mean, I know about the production of books and what goes, the work that goes into them. So I thought, well, it's a very special little book. I'm having a lot of trouble understanding the Sanskrit words, but I'm going to keep it. Um, because it was a gift and it came from this place in India. It was written by this beautiful being with the red dress. And I kept it on my bookshelf for many years. I would occasionally glance at it. But little did I know that this was the bait that drew Swami to him. And it also drew my husband to be because in 1978 I met my husband and we, uh, he came to stay with me and he was immediately attracted to that book. He he also picked it up and began reading it, and he realized that it was had great truths in it. Again, he had the same difficulty. He could not understand the Sanskrit words, um, and there was we didn't have a Sanskrit dictionary or anything like that. But we knew it was a special little book. Then in 1983, we decided to go to America so that he could visit my parents and that we could work for a while. And so we packed this book away. Came back five years later, I opened the box and out fell the book. I thought, there's that book again. I think I must start to get rid of some of these books. They are um, too much to be carrying around. And I thought I had taken that book to some secondhand bookstores because I made several trips to secondhand bookstores. Packed these books away again. Then about a year later, this was 1987, we were moving to the countryside. I opened the box and out comes that little book. It even had a little bit of mold, green mold, starting to grow on the cover. I said, there's that book again. I thought I got rid of it. But now that we were living out in the countryside, we had a lot of time to study and read, and we began reading that book again. I cleaned the little bit of mold off the cover. We put a plastic cover on it, and pretty soon we were, I would use the word ignited. We got um, little index cards, and we got began finding out the meanings of the Sanskrit words. I'm not quite sure, sure how we did. Oh, by then we had other books about Swami. That's right, and they had glossaries in the back. So we were able to clear words like jiva, and, um, uh, well, that would, would, would just be one of them off hand, Jiva. Um, and, um, let's see, samsaras, things like that. And things began to make a lot more sense. We began to realize, my goodness, this book is a real treasure. This is not just some little book that we read once or twice and forgotten. And that book, without a doubt, seeded. That was the bait. That was the bait that Swami used to draw us to him because after that, we began, after we began clearing these Sanskrit words, we got a picture of Swami, kept it in our bedroom, began looking at it, thinking about him, and pretty soon we wanted to go to India. A bookmark fell out of one of the books that we had bought about Swami. It had a phone number on it with the number of our national secretary, uh, Sai organization secretary, her name was Madeline Gilliman, and she uh, said, yes, we have two seats left on a group going to see Swami for Christmas. This was 1989. And before we knew it, we were booked to, to go to India. I remember by then I was sitting in the kitchen making a list of 
the costs that it would be for me to go. I would need some rent money to cover where we were staying, some travel money and so on. I needed to pay for my ticket. And I remember looking up at the ceiling and I wasn't talking to Swami, not necessarily. I was just, you know, how you sometimes talk to yourself out loud. There was no one else in the house. I looked at the ceiling and I said, I need $3,000. There's no one in particular. I think I, part of me might have thought I was talking to Swami, but I didn't really realize who he was. The phone rang a few moments later. It was a public children's book publisher. And they said, Lynn, we are in a spot of bother. Uh, a book has just been delivered to us by the illustrator, but we do not think the illustrations are up to par. Can you, would you be uh, available to illustrate this little book? It's 16 pages long. It's about cats, which is one of my favorite topics. And we will pay, we need the artwork in two weeks, and we will pay you $3,000. At that moment, everything in the room began to go into slow motion. It was as though I was in a dream world. And I remember my heart starting to pound very, very hard. And somehow I found the ability to keep my voice calm and say, yes, very good. I can do that. No problem. I really need $3,000. And sure enough, it was an easy job to do. One of the easiest jobs I've ever done it was just a sweet little story about cats singing at night to the moon. And I received the check for $3,000. And then my husband and I were on our way. So that's how Swami caught us. That was the bait, Gita Vahini, and that was We Are His Catch. And to this very day, we are very happy to be members of his fishing creel, of his catch of fish. And we hope we will always stay there, safe in his beloved grace, safe in his love, safe in the wonder that is Sri Bhagavan, Sri Satya Sai Baba. Om Sri Sai Ram. Om Sri Sai Ram. Om... तस्मात् कारुण्य भावेन रक्ष रक्ष साई ईश्वरा हरि ओम तत्सच्ची साई ईश्वरा रुपनमस्तु ओम शांति 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 हे